morning, folks. Knowing that you're going one to one is even more important that uh, we cover some of this stuff. So my goal this morning is that this is not a lecture. I want this to be as interactive and conversive as possible. Anytime I'm in a school, I always learn something by the time I walk out. All right, so I've been doing this for a while. Uh, I've seen a lot of different things, so I hope to share with you a little knowledge. We're going to start with a little bit of a quiz this morning. So we've got a lot of different icons up here. And I'm going to tell you right now, I fully acknowledge that everyone in here was born with a cell phone in their hand. I'm not naive. I know you know technology. But I would challenge you that you may not know some of the things that happen in the background. And that's where I come in. So a little background on me. Um, I've been at Loyola for six years. I was in higher ed for 13 years before that. Uh, so I've been around the block a time or two when it comes to uh, technology. I've seen a lot of different things. So uh, my other duties at Loyola, I'm also the uh, coach of the cybersecurity team this year. I'm working on a master's degree in cybersecurity as well. So it's a hot field right now. A lot of different things that are, that are out there. So hopefully if you walk out of here with a little bit uh, of knowledge today, it'll be okay. So very unscientific survey. How many Facebook users? Wow, most of you. Okay. Um, how about this guy? First off, what is it? Snapchat. Okay. All right, fair number. Okay. Uh, Instagram. Okay. Uh, Twitter. Okay. Twitter. All right, and then where are my kick followers? Okay. Interesting. Okay. So this, this this will be a shorter one. How many people, just by show of hands, how many people do not have a smartphone? Do not. Okay, I'm, you folks, this is perfect. All right, great, great. And, and we'll talk about why. So why am I here? My whole point is to raise awareness today. I do not want you walking out of here paranoid. That's the number one thing. When I spoke to the parents, I told them the exact same thing. I am sure that some of you have heard my name before at the dinner table somewhere back in February. So I'm that guy. Depending how that conversation went in your house, I'm that guy. Um, we told your parents the same thing. You want awareness, but not paranoia. We're going to talk about what social media is, so I'm going to pick on a few folks. Give me your definition of social media. What do you think it is? I'm going to pick on you because you're in the front row. Um, okay, share experiences, see what our folks are up to. Okay, place where girls can brag. Fair enough. Anybody else? Anybody else wants to talk to me yet? Okay. All right, we're going to talk about social engineering. So I'm going to give you my definition of social engineering. And this happens to you on a daily basis, whether you realize it or not. If I want you to do something, all right, whether it's click on an ad, show up at a sporting event, I'm going to use social media in some way, shape, or form to get that response from you. So most of you are targeted every day by what you're talking about from ads. If you think about if you do a Google search or if you use Gmail, you're going to see ads off the right hand side that somehow manage to talk about and target marketing to you things that you've talked about. That's not by chance. Right? That's by design because they read everything you put out. Right. We're going to talk about how you can protect yourself. Uh, for, for folks in high school, this is more important than ever. Uh, there's a lot of college implications that we're going to talk about today. Um, and some of this may have come up. Seniors, have you, have, as you have gone through that admissions process, I guarantee you that this has either come up face-to-face -face in an interview or has come up around a conference table in the admissions office of, are we going to let you into our school? All right, so this is one of my favorite quotes. Again, you know, I coach the cybersecurity team, so this is very true. Who needs the NSA when we have social media? There was a point in time when you needed some pretty pretty good sleuthy skills to find out information about people. Those days are long gone. All right, there's people that just sit there and troll social media looking for things. Uh, and we've kind of turned into some of those people. And we'll do a little bit of that today and I'll prove a couple of points with you. All right, you have a, whether you realize this or not, the most precious commodity right now in high school. And that's your reputation. Right, you've probably heard this from your parents, from administrators, from faculty, from friends. This social media, and again, I advocate the use of social media. I think it's a great tool, uh, but it is extremely easy, and I've seen a lot of people do it, completely ruin their reputation using those tools. Whether or not they realize it or not, it's gone. And once it's gone, especially in the digital world, it's extremely hard to fix, if not impossible. Right? 
and I'll share a couple examples with you today. All right, we know social media is pervasive. What's different about the internet now for my generation? You know, I was in college in, in the late 90s and early 2000s. Right? I would spend days in the library looking for things to do research. You guys have Wikipedia and Google and other things that you can you know, do a search and in 30 seconds have the information that took me a day. You have more computer pa computing power in your pocket with that smartphone than they took to the moon. Right, so you, your generation has exceptional access to information. Right? And I don't think a lot of folks realize that. But what's different now is my generation read content. We looked at news, weather, sports, whatever it was. We, we consume content. Your generation is the content. You guys contribute, everyone in this room, whether it's Twitter posts, Facebook posts, Instagram photos, whatever it is, you are the content. Right? You're generating a tremendous amount of content on a daily basis that will follow you indefinitely as digital. That's the difference with your generation. So you are the content. Keep that in mind. There are some folks that become extremely uh, efficient at searching for personal information. I'm going to show you how to do that. Right? I'm going to show you some of the stuff that's out there. All right, if, if you were given um, an internet research assignment, what are the, the top tools that you would use? What do you guys use for, for research? Google. All right, that's the number one, and there's another big one out there. What else? Wikipedia. It's another one? Bing. Bing's another one. All right, so <laughs> there's lots and lots of them out there. Do you guys pay anything to use their services? No. No, so they're completely free, right? Uh, so, but they're, they're for-profit companies. So Microsoft owns Bing, and Google is a mega giant. They're making billions of dollars a week just on advertising alone. So they're giving you a free service. All right, is anything really free? No. All right, I'm going to show you why they don't charge you for anything, but how they make money. So Google, Google and Bing are your two top, uh, two top research, and we're going to use them for some uh, maybe not so good purposes. So we kind of did our, our poll on who uses what. Just as another uh, another split, how many how many iPhone folks? Okay. About 90%. How about Android? Okay, pretty pretty wide split there. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I can tell you that, that iPhones are a lot of fun. Uh, typically, when I do this presentation, I bring one of the loyal seniors with me that's on the team. But they had a senior event today, and he'd be sitting over here in the corner, and he loves iPhones. Uh, we'd be pulling contacts and photos off your iPhones while you're sitting here, whether in your pocket. So iPhones are fun to do that. Well, I'll talk more about that now. Okay. Who can tell me why cell phones were originally GPS enabled? There's a GPS chip on your phone for a reason. That you're 100% correct. So you're 100% correct. And here's why. Think back. All right. In the uh, in the days of landlines, how many of you folks do not have a home phone in your house anymore? Cell phone only. Okay, so here's the reason. In those days when everyone had a landline, if you dialed 911 and needed assistance and were incapacitated, they knew where you were based off your phone. When cell phones became cheaper and easier to use and everyone had one, people started getting rid of their landlines to save money. If you were to dial 911 at that time, no one could find you. So if you couldn't speak or something had happened to you, they couldn't find you. So it was a mandate, we're going to put chips in phones, for, they call it E911, Enhanced 911, to find you. Great, so that's why they're there. Since that time, there's been a lot of manufacturers that now take advantage of that chip to do different things with it. That's where some of the privacy issues come in. Okay, so we kind of talked about, we talked about kind of what you use social media for. We know that you use the internet for research uh, and for other fun stuff. I'm curious for, for two things. We, talk, we know that you don't pay anything to use social media. So who thinks or believes by showing hands that what you put on the internet you can control and it's private? Really? Nobody. I would challenge you based on some of the stuff I know about you all now. Okay, interesting. All right, so do you think that you can control any of your content? Can you control any content you put out there? What you put, ah, that is the sentence of the day. You can control what you put out there. That, that, is, that is the tagline of the day. Okay, so, how many people put apps on their phones? 
Everybody? Okay. How many people, when you go to install that app, how many people read that wonderful text that's there? You're, you agree to install this app. My future lawyers in here should probably read it. I know, I know the future lawyers do. Great. So when you, re when you read that, do you actually understand what it's telling you? They, basically, they own you. Good, good point. All right, so I picked, I picked one little app here. It's the Hello World app, but I, I picked it to prove a point. When you install any app, it's, gonna, it's going to tell you exactly what it's going to do. This particular or this app says, hey, I want to use your GPS location. Is it okay that I use your GPS coordinates? And that thing's going to point you on a map within 25 feet of where you are. And the chips and the phones are pretty accurate. So other things that it may put on there. Here's, here's one. So the folks that had Android, this was one that was about six months ago. Anybody have the flashlight app on their phone? Okay. So there were a couple of nefarious flashlight apps out there that when you installed them, it would, it would tell you, we're going to, we want to use your GPS data. We want access to your call history. We want access to your text messages. We want access to the file system on your phone. And, and I've tagged you guys as the, unfairly as the next, next, next finish generation. Most folks don't bring anything. I want the app, download, install it, I don't care, next. Okay, you're telling me some stuff, I don't care, next, finish, and I can use my app. So folks that downloaded that flashlight app, yeah, it turned the flashlight on and you could walk around in the dark, no problem. But at the same time, it was transmitting your GPS data, it was combing your call history, it was combing your photos, and sending them back to somewhere else. Please read what you're installing on your phone. You gave it permission. It's not illegal because you told it it's okay to do that. Right? You gave it permission. That's what a lot of folks don't get. Read. Okay? Please read it. My Facebook users were most of you. So I hope nobody knows this person. I'm, I'm picking on her for a reason. Uh, there are about a billion people on the planet that use Facebook on a daily basis. All right, most of them are not in the U.S., most of them are overseas. Right, so there's about 7 billion, a little over 7 billion people on the planet, a billion of them use Facebook, most of them with mobile devices. How many folks have no idea or have never touched the Facebook privacy settings like this person has not? Oh, now I know you're not. Now I know you're just not telling me because a lot of you have no privacy settings set. And I, I know that because I looked. Um, <laughs> I did, don't worry. Um, so let me, let me prove a point. For, for those people who won't tell me that you haven't set your, face, your privacy settings, here, here's what I will know about you in a heartbeat. Uh, full name, basically address, where she works, where she lives, uh, all of her friends, what her likes are. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to my NSA comment here. If I want to know anything about her, she's told me just about everything you need to know, including her full birthday. In the world of, if you want to call it cyber stalking, if you want to get you know, creepy, I was here last week and a couple of middle schoolers called me creepy, and that was a that was a, uh, a legitimate tag that I walked away with. It, it would not take much to put this into a Google Map or a Bing Map and find her own find it. And I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes how we actually did that to this poor, unsuspecting person. I have no idea who she is, but I'm, I'm proving a point that it takes about five minutes of clicking around to point somebody on the map, for better or for worse. Okay. Kick? Where are my kick folks again? This one wasn't real popular with you guys. All right, and I'm, I'm glad. All right, I'm very glad that it's it's not as as popular as uh, some folks have seen it. So, um, Instagram. Yeah. Okay, Instagram's fun. So they're owned by Facebook. Facebook bought them for a billion dollars. B for billion, lots of money. And they're making tremendous amounts of money. Do you pay for Instagram? No. Okay. I'm sorry? Or so you think, yeah. You're, you're not paying for it in dollars. Uh, you're paying for it in photos. So you guys pretty much know what Instagram is. But all the photos are public and searchable. Even if you click on the protect my account, yeah, it takes me five minutes to get around that. Uh, so don't don't think for a minute that, that they're public. All your photos are GPS tag. Instagram is one of those fun apps that you told it it's okay to use my GPS settings. Now yes, you can turn it off, but by default it's going to use it. Now why is that important? 
If you take a photo and upload it, you just put yourself on the map. So it's not hard to find you. So hopefully in, in the, the good world, again, most of these tools, my history buffs in here, how many points in history were things made for good and then turned around and used for not so good purposes? No one thought when they created Instagram that people are gonna be looking, in this case, for young people, uh, maybe for not so good things. So please keep that in mind. So yes, yeah, so you can turn that feature off. Here, here's the bad part, and I see this more often than I want to. People will create fake Instagram accounts, post photos that aren't good that they have of someone, and turn into a cyberbullying incident. Now, I know everyone in here probably has a story. Uh, I've seen it. You know, I talk to you know, kids at the school I work at. Uh, I talk to kids in different schools I come to, and everyone has a story. It happens all the time. And that crap's got to stop. All right? it's, it used to be, you know, in my world, it was conversations in the hallway, but when you went home, and the problem went away. Okay, you can get away from it. Now you can't get away from the problem. So my advice to you is, if that is happening, find somebody at the school of the administration, Straub especially, uh, to help with that problem. You don't have to put up with it, and that's, that's part of the stuff that's got to stop. But it starts with you guys. Right? It starts with the folks in this room to take a stance and make that stop. Everyone seems to have a lot more courage when they're behind a keyboard. All right? And that's, that's more powerful than anything, at least in my book. So, I promised I would show you some stuff. So, uh, Instagram has a live feed. I'm not sure if anyone's seen it. You can go to a website and it's aggregating all of the photos as they actively come through Instagram and they post them immediately. Right? They're tagged with GPS coordinates. They have your uh, account name, whatever that account name is that you're using in Instagram. And if you put, I'm going to put my not so good hat on here for a minute. Uh, most, most folks in your age group and even in middle school usually take pictures of the same thing, especially some of the younger kids. Uh, so if you have siblings that are in elementary and middle school, here's where you're going to go home and have a conversation tonight about how this stuff really works. All right, so younger kids typically take pictures of their friends. They take pictures of the dog, the cat, the tree. You know, they're just using their phone because they don't know anything. Yeah. High school kids typically take pictures of different stuff and post it. And sometimes that stuff is things you shouldn't be doing. Right? I'm not naive, okay? But I can tell you in about four seconds, uh, I can see stuff. And, oh, by the way, you can, you can do this since it's GPS tagged. When you do the Instagram search, you can say, show me pictures that are just coming out of Suburban Park. Uh, so it's not hard to start pulling, pulling information out of a specific locale. Okay? So did I do that? Yes. Um, and, and why did I do that? Because it's all public. Okay. So other things that Instagram's linked to, let's see, your Facebook account, your Twitter account, and all the other fun stuff that you guys use as well. So it's, it's not hard to, uh, to start making a point very quickly. Yeah, I like this guy. <laughs> so, it, it thought, it, up, up there in the back it may not come out so well, but this, this is an Instagram uh, capture I did. He took a picture of his passport. <laughs> okay, you laugh. You laugh. Okay, so how many people in here, and be honest, when you walked out of the NBA, posted a picture of your license? A couple of you did, because I have one. <laughs> Uh, psychology minor in college. Uh, 
I remember being a teenager, kind of, it wasn't that long ago, even though I had the grade to prove it, but um, you're going to take photos of stuff, you're going to think it's innocent, it may be innocent fun, but the, the technology that you're using now doesn't make it so innocent. So most folks think, yeah, I can send this photo, it disappears in two or ten seconds, whatever it is. Couldn't be further from the truth. All right, so again, the person I normally travel with and do this is a loyal senior. And we played around with Snapchat a little bit just to prove the point to some of our kids. Uh, so photos were sent. Anybody know how to do a screen capture on your phone? Okay. So screen capture is one way to grab that photo. All right. The other way uh, is to actually go into the, the operating system of the phone and take the photo because it's cached. So it's not hard to pull that photo out. So there was an issue back in Baltimore, some of you are probably in the loop on this, uh, where Snapchat was used. Uh, an eighth grade girl sent a explicit nude photo to her boyfriend. Her boyfriend in turn sent it to all of his friends. And to make a long story short, 15 kids were expelled. Okay. That has permanent consequences and it kills your reputation. There's another one I'll share that happened on March 29th, not that far from here. So it does not take long to make a, you know, so if, if your parents read this, and I already told them about this, when they see that word safely, oh, it's okay, it's the little, it's the little white ghost, no problem, that's a safe app for you to use. It's not, it's not, okay? It doesn't, it does not take much to get around it and, and use that for Okay, Twitter, you guys were a, a fairly large number of Twitter users, okay? So, I'm curious, did, tell, give me some examples of things you tweet. Caps, 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 caps. Okay, <laughs> caps in? Yeah. What else? Everyone is very quiet now, because everybody thinks I'm creepy in here now. <laughs> All right, give me, tell me some things you tweet about. It's not like I don't already know, so you might as well tell me. And the fact that you don't want to do it, right? Okay. What else? Ah, come on. In the back. Help me again. The word yellow and black. Okay, someone's going to have to help me with that. It might show my age now. Top. Okay, catch a fish, okay. That's all songs. That's everyone seems pretty innocent today, right? So. All right. Tell me, tell me what happens once you send that tweet out. What happens to it? I can, that's true. But something even, something that, that might, might surprise you. What happens? How, first off, how long does it stay there? All right, we're learning this is good. A very important database. What database does it go into? Who knows? Google will index it. Yes, it is. It's a government thing. So, how many people have heard of a little place called the Library of Congress? Okay. So, everyone is aware that the Library of Congress stores important documents in American history. Here, here is the crazy part that I have a hard time uh, processing. So, yes, they go in the Library of Congress. But here, here's what I find fascinating. The, uh, the U.S. government has come to a point where they think and feel that your generation is the digital generation. So my generation created paper, books, they kept them, important documents. Your generation contributes digital content. So they feel that you're, in order to store and keep track of your mark on this planet, they feel it necessary to store all tweets in the Library of Congress. That's permanent. So again, we talk about reputation. Think about some of the stuff that you put out there. It is following you in the Library of Congress. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's searchable. So I just went in and said, what is my getting written? Mm -hmm. I just so that was scary. they have not put the Library of Congress database online yet. But as the, any US citizen, you can walk in the Library of Congress and say, I'd like to search the Twitter database. Here's a console. Have that. Same thing is true for Twitter photos. All right, they're all put in there as well. So this, this is your mark on history. So every time I see, you know, at Starbucks, uh, I don't care. Uh, you know, but but you're, again, you, your generation is the content when it comes to social media. 
So again, reputation. I can't, you know, I'm going to be a broken record by the time I walk out of here today, but I, I cannot stress to you how often this comes up. I'm sorry. Thank you. What's up? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Private accounts. Uh, social, social media equals not private. Uh, so yeah, there's that nice little checkbox, protect your, protect your tweets. That's about two and a half minutes to go around that. So it's, it's not hard. <laughs> I gotta come up here, I'm sorry. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Now, uh, for those of, who, those of you who uh, may either have parents in law enforcement or have law enforcement aspirations yourself, anything that's in social media is completely admissible in court uh, and can be subpoenaed. All right, who thinks that, how many folks in here thinks that text messaging falls under social media? Okay, I would agree with you. All right, text messages are the same way. They are completely admissible in court. Just because you delete them off your phone doesn't mean anything. The carrier is legally required to store them. I don't know, it used to be six months. I'm not sure if they changed that or not. But all that stuff can be, can be retrieved as well. Again, this is a digital footprint. It's not like sticking a piece of paper in the shredder and making it go away. Ah, uh, so. So let me, let me read you something. I hope everyone in here could probably recite this to me. Just double check and make sure. Uh, this is the Severance School Twitter page. Uh, you know, all public. So what I did, I went out here to the followers button, the followers tab. There's a lot of students here that follow Twitter, right? Or follow your school's Twitter page. So your, uh, your uh, mission statement is focused on character, content, scholarship, how many people in here would, would think that you follow that mission statement? I hope every hand goes up. <laughs> okay, most of you, everyone, everyone's really scared now. So I, I, I can tell you, and I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pull anybody out of the mix here, but I can guarantee you all I did, and this this was no hacking skill required, went out to the, the school's Twitter page. I do this for every school I go to, so don't don't be, it's not just you. Um, go out to your Twitter page. Click on a couple of the folks that identify as students because your picture, you're either in your separate gear, uh, you know, obviously you're with friends, and I can, I, I am, you know, I can tell you that there are several folks in this room that, based off what I've read about you and what you tweeted about, don't follow that mission statement. Okay, so that may not be your character, that may not be who you are. Again, everyone seems to have this courage when they get behind a keyboard. Uh, or a cell phone and not think about what they're doing. When you follow the school, it makes it really easy to find you. Uh, and, and I guarantee you, I'm not the only one doing that. Especially for you folks here in the front row. You just went through this process. I guarantee you, some college recruiter sat there and did the exact same thing I did to figure out, I have an essay here on the right and I have a picture on the left to the match. You know, I, I used to see it. I go to, I volunteer at the, uh, at the Mission, I go to the soup kitchen, and over here there's pictures of you doing something you should be doing at that age. Do I have the right person? Doesn't take much. More fun. So we had Bing. You guys said you used Bing down here. Bing has a fun little feature. Again, we've already established that Twitter is public. Uh, anything you put out there follows you. We talked about GPS coordinates. So Twitter is one of those fun little apps that allows that you've told it it's okay to use your GPS coordinates. So I'm going to turn on the, uh, the Twitter feed for the Big Mac. Now, I picked, uh, where am I? So we've got, uh, this is kind of Towson up here. I'm going to pick on the folks in my backyard. This happens to be, well, won't tell you where it is yet. So the point is, the little T's on the map are folks that have sent out a tweet recently. The little plus sign means multiple tweets. So let me turn on another layer here to make it a little scarier. Uh, Get a little closer. So this is going to be Towson University, Towson Temple of Art for folks that are familiar. I know you guys have probably played in that stadium at some point. Uh, Let me turn on the satellite view. Again, no hacking required. You can go home and do this when you can. Yeah. So this is why I love doing this. Tell me what those buildings are. The dorms. The dorms. They are the dorms. Now, 
What type of fun things do you think come out of the Towson University dorms? Uh, I'm not going to show that to you, by the way. <laughs> but here's the point. If I click on one of those T's, I get that actual tweet from that person. I, I'll share with you at least the one story that, that uh, I did at another presentation for college kids. Uh, went to the T, clicked on it, went to that person's profile, and it was everything they had done for the past 24 hours. Uh, I would be, I would guarantee you that his mother did not want to read half the stuff that was out there. Uh, but it was, I'm in my dorm room at 207A, uh, take, the, you know, take the door, I've, I've propped the door at the bottom right hand corner of the parking lot, open, come up the stairs on the third door on the right. All right? So it was an invitation to a party, but anyone else reading that, again, publicly reading that, knows he's propped the door, what room he's in, and it's just, I don't know how you all feel about this, all right? I, I love having this conversation with students. Do you think that that information is private or not? Does that make you uncomfortable? I hear some yes. Okay. How many people? How many people are uncomfortable? I don't like it. Okay. How many people just don't care? And there's that's fine. This is this is not. There's no right or wrong answer. Again, my point is to raise awareness about paranoia. All right. It's very easy to do. So all I'm, all, my only goal for here today is to make you all think. I'm not going to change your behavior. I'm not trying to change your behavior. All I'm telling you is, this is the stuff I didn't have to hack for. Okay. The other stuff that's out there that I want, it takes a little longer, but if we get in this whole ethical conversation, right? So it is possible to be a lot more dangerous than just what's public. Does that make sense? All right. So a couple, uh, a couple of reality checks. Passwords. Uh, how many people have shared their password with your best friend? Oh, okay. Be honest. I mean, this. So here, here's the deal. All right. I would recommend that you change it when you walk out of this room. Here's what I've seen happen. All right. Passwords are, are for your information. We'll talk about another reason for passwords in a second. But I would highly recommend that you don't share your password with anybody. Because here's what's going to happen. All right. You're in that. You're you're kind of in this. Relationships change every day in high school. If someone knows a password and there's a little bit of a spat that day, all right, there's a possibility your friend is going to do something not good with that password or share it with someone else. If it opens up a lot of doors, they can trash your reputation. Passwords are you know, kind of that weakest link in the security chain. You can set your privacy settings. You can be good about what you post. You can think about what you post. Someone else has that password. They can. It doesn't matter what you've done. They can unravel that very quickly. So my advice is, please don't do it. If, you know, I'm not. I've had people ask me for mine. I'm like, no, I'm not going to give it to you. I'm sorry if I offend you, but yes, I trust you. Yes, you're my friend. You don't need my password. Okay. Now, for for passwords, the Facebook folks. How many of you are friends with your parents on Facebook? Okay. Good. How many of your parents? have your Facebook password, just out of curiosity. Fair enough. Okay. I, I don't have a problem with that, honestly. Uh, again, everything's public, so you, you defriend your parents, and we had this conversation and probably came up at dinner. If you defriend your parents, there's still ways they can find out what you're doing. Okay. So, how's your recruitment? You folks up here in the front have already been through this. Juniors, you're getting ready to start this. Think about it. Right. It's been a long time. It's probably been been in Lakefield for six years now. I was in the college world for 13 before that. So Facebook and Twitter were just getting popular around the time that I left the college world. But we were still using it for recruitment. As a hiring manager at Loyola, this is the first place I go. I have a resume. I'm going to look at, I'm going to go out and just do a Google search or a Bing search for that person to see what's on that resume doesn't match that person. Are they wearing a mask? You know, are they putting on a front for me when they're sitting in front of me across the table or not? So don't be surprised for, for the seniors. Did this come up at all? Did they tell you they were doing this or ask you? No? I guarantee you they were. Yep. Mm. So, great question. What if you go by a fake name on your social network? Uh, one, it's illegal to impersonate someone else. Two, I guarantee you that one of your friends has tagged you in a photo with your real name. 
And the way that the, the Facebook's introduced a new search tool where you can just say, show me all photos with your name. Right? And if I click on your name, but it links me to another profile page, why are they different? So someone, someone will out you as your real name. Right. Ah, so mistaken identity maybe? I have seen that. So that's where sometimes that conversation will come in. So if you know, and, and I would recommend you all do this too, just Google your name to see what's out there. There are plenty of people with my name that are lawyers, doctors, and maybe some people if you do a search in the court record database that aren't so good, you want to make sure that, that, you, that you know who you are. But yeah, I've, yeah, mistaken identity is tough. If your Facebook page is, so the question is, if you go in a job interview and delete your Facebook page, uh, will that information still be present? The way that it works right now, uh, there is no, you, you can deactivate your page, but it, it never goes away. It's always there. It will take away some of the stuff. If you've been tagged in multiple photos, your face and the name associated with the photo will still be there. But the post and stuff that you had on your page is dormant. Now, if it, if it ever comes up and there's ever a, a legal issue, that deactivated page is still admissible in court. They can subpoena that information. Good question. Scholarships, obviously. Reputation. Here's one that happened March 29th. All right, over at Edgewood. There was a group of girls. They took some interesting photos. They, they did not post them on Facebook. They sent them to friends. Again, friends. The friends turned around and created a Facebook page for those photos and then posted every one of them and told them who they were and what school they went to. The girls in this case made a mistake when they took the photo and sent it to someone. Again, this is, this is behavior I'm not going to change. I'm not naive enough to think I'm changing what you do. Just don't make it digital and don't send it. Come on. So someone is going to pick it up and someone's going to use it for, for some not so good purposes. So this, this, this was ugly in the news for a couple of days. Obviously, the school got pulled into it. Uh, at that point, the girls, you know, their faces were out there, and there's, there's really not any way getting the back. Obviously, Facebook took the photos down. Plenty of people took screenshots of those photos, and they're, they're out there for a very long time. NCAA, who uh, in the senior class, if you guys and gals are going to Division I or Division II schools and have gotten an NCAA scholarship, I'm here to tell you right now they have a zero tolerance policy for social media screw ups. All right, here's, here's straight out of their rule book. It's, I know it's a lot to read. I'll summarize it. When you end up in a D1 or D2 school, they're going to assign you someone from the team uh, to be your social media mentor, for lack of a better term. Basically, it means they're going to watch everything you do. And if you do something stupid uh, in a photo or on a tweet, especially in college gear, they're going to yank your scholarship, uh, and then you may be able to stay at the school, you may not. I've seen seniors get their scholarships rescinded prior to making it to the school because of dumb things they did their senior year, whether it's Ocean City or wherever your favorite vacation spot is, doing it, activities that you may not should be doing right now, uh, they're, they're going to figure it out. Right? So I've seen plenty of scholarships yanked. Uh, that's not a fun one to explain, but it will happen. Uh, I normally, you're all going to think I'm very narcissistic doing this, but I normally do not put pictures of myself in my own presentations, but I did some for a reason. Uh, kick seemed to, that got loud, kick seemed to have uh, quite a prevalence down here for a while. We had uh, an FBI agent and the chief cyber lawyer for Department of Justice on campus a couple of weeks ago. And one of the interesting comments, uh, this is Special Agent Nye, the comment she made to us was she goes to a lot of girls' schools to talk. The FBI is extremely interested in Kick right now. The FBI watches all social media, but they're extremely interested in Kick because there's this uh, misconception out there that it's private, anonymous. So there's a lot of criminal activity in Kick. Some other people have gotten caught up in, in it because of child pornography, and that's kind of been the, that's not who they were looking for, but they eventually caught up with. 
So for folks that use kick, sometimes things get misinterpreted. Normally they're not coming after high school kids, but if they see enough, it may send us some red flags. Especially with, there's been a lot of stuff happening in Maryland recently with the Edgewood issue and a couple of the other Baltimore schools that have had some uh, nude photo issues. Technically, if you're under 18, technically it's child pornography. Um, you walk out of here with anything today. What you do now, even you know, folks that are tweeting now, and I have a little thing running here, so I hope somebody has sent some tweet while we've been talking. Uh, it's permanent, right? It is permanent. Now, the other thing, I know everyone talks to each other about social media. When you go home tonight, if you haven't had that conversation, or if you have younger siblings, have the conversation. All right, talk about it. You don't have any problem talking about things online. Talk, have the conversation at home about what's going on, especially if there are issues. You know, if, you, if you're sitting there and you're starting to sweat a little bit and there's issues, talk to your parents, talk to Ms. Stroud, get things uh, straightened up. Now, there's one slide that apparently didn't make it, uh, but I will talk about it. And then we just, thank you, perfect. How many people use ask.fm? Anybody in here? Uh-huh. Uh You're right. No hands. I know what that means. Most of you. Yeah. So if, if that was not popular, great, don't make it popular in the upper school. Okay. I, it seems to be more popular uh, in some middle schools. Don't make it popular here. So I'll give you the quick rundown of what it is. All right, Ask FM is, it, it links to your Twitter or your Facebook account. It uses that layer of authentication. Uh, but basically, people think it's an anonymous site to answer questions. All right, most of the questions that are asked and students have responded to freely would make me turn the color of these chairs. I would be beat red if someone asked me some of these questions. Uh, but you know, younger folks seem to answer them without an issue. So don't make that popular if it's not popular here. Now, something to prove the point. All right, and this was, this was a little fun. I found this clip, uh, this is a little YouTube clip. It was made by a Dutch bank all right, for their customers to make a point. All right, so this is not, a, there's some subtitles, so we're going to work on our foreign language skills today. Uh, but uh, keep in mind, this was made by a Dutch bank. So I'm going to play it for you, and then we'll talk about it.
it, I, I think it's interesting to see how different countries treat it. It's not just a problem here. It's not just a problem for folks in your age category. It's a huge problem for people in my age, and especially my parents and grandparents' age, because they don't understand what they're sharing uh, and how easy it is for someone to drain their bank account extremely quickly. So there's lots of different things. Again, I think these are all great tools. I'm not telling you not to use them. All I'm telling you is more, be more vigilant about what you share. All right, so what can you do? Please understand what you're sharing. That's the only thing before. It's kind of like that think before you speak routine that you hear all the time from your parents. Think before you tweet. Think before you make that Facebook post. Think before you post that photo on Instagram or send that text message. Know your apps. Read what it's telling you it's going to do. If you don't want that app to use your GPS, to access your photos, to access your call list, whatever it is, don't do it. Right? Know, know what it is. So I like uh, Bluetooth. Right? How many people use Bluetooth on their phones? It's on by default. All right, Bluetooth is the number, number one way I can get into your phone. All right? And again, if I, had, if I had Mason with me, he'd be up here uh, hitting the phones that, that have Bluetooth on, because it's very easy to start pulling call lists and photos off phones that have Bluetooth on. Know your device. So most folks in here are iPhone users. I would recommend that you look. iPhone and Android make it very easy to tell the apps what they can use. So if you don't want something using GPS, tell it now. You can do that. It's extremely simple. Uh, I had shared some resources with, uh, with your counselors, so they have that. Uh, they can share that with you as well. Have a healthy skepticism about what it is you're doing, what other folks are doing. If you get that, uh, how many people are friends in here on Facebook with folks they have no idea who the heck they are? Okay. <laughs> Case in point. Here, here's my rule of thumb. This is my personal belief that I'm not trying to force on you. I am not friends with anyone on Facebook unless I would have them to my house for dinner. I, I don't need the competition of I have 2,500 friends. I, I really don't want to be that popular. Um, but if you're extending your online life, if you're extending that social life, is it a popularity contest? Why do you need to be friends with 5,000 folks? All you're doing is giving that much more people access to what you're sharing. Okay. Education, that's the number one reason why I'm here. I have a great time doing this, but I, I do truly believe that you know, we're not, this is not a problem that's easily fixed. We're not gonna turn the internet off. We're, we're way past that. Uh, the key to this is starting with you, uh, and hopefully you then spreading that message. So education is key when it comes to fixing the issue. Please make good decisions. I mean, you're, you're tired of hearing this from your parents, I'm sure. Uh, you have to make a lot of decisions every day. I understand, you may not think I do, but I understand that social media is an outlet for a lot of folks in here, and that's great. I'm, I'm glad that you have a place where you feel comfortable sharing problems. Just know who you're sharing them with and what you're sharing. And if something's not right, talk about it, okay? You talk about it online. Take that same courage that you have behind the keyboard and extend it to an adult. All right? Adults aren't as scary as you think they are. All right? Seniors, you might agree with me, maybe not. But, uh, please, 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 please talk about it. So I will answer just about any question you have. I think this drops can help me with mics for the top power. We've we got five. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You enjoy doing this. Yes. So you enjoy being creepy? <laughs> well, if it if it's creepy for the greater good, then I guess I could say yes. <laughs> good question. Oh, are there any Good question. So I, I can't speak for school policy, but what I can tell you is, is it legal for someone to look at stuff on the net? And the answer to that is yes. Keep in mind, all of this stuff is completely public. I use no skill, no hacking skill whatsoever to do anything that I showed you today. All right, zero hacking. So everything that I can see, anyone in this room can see. So from a school policy perspective, I'll defer to the administration. But I can tell you, yes, this is completely legal for anyone to look at. Um, Please. The school's responsibility to make this a safe place for everyone in the school environment. I would think the school does 
of not spend a lot of time going and looking for things, but if things come to us, we must address them to make this a safe place. And our primary point of being in school is to educate. So it's, so it's a safe place for everybody to learn and grow and have a so you said uh, earlier that you were going to, like, in a couple minutes I'm going to show you how to do that. Was that, you meant just like the Google search with the Twitter? Or? Yeah, so I have, what I've had running here in the background, uh, and we'll, we'll refresh this. This is a live Twitter map. Ah. I'll show you how easy this is. We're just going to say, show me tweets and see where it's far. Sorry. You guys are right about here, so no one in here sent anything yet, so that's good. I didn't, I didn't catch anybody in here. Darn, I was going to make Sorry? Yes. Who else? What's that? Do you have your GPS turned on for Twitter? <laughs> It depends if they have the GPS turned on. So these are folks. These are folks that are from the phone. I'm, I'm looking at strictly cell phones right now. So I'm sure there's been a lot more tweets. And I'm, I'm using a very narrow focus. If I turn this, if I crank that up for the U.S., I'm going to get a lot. Sorry. <laughs> Live demos are always the best because you never know what uh, technology has. Mr. Morrill, were you going to show us uh, how to, about the woman whose Facebook page you pulled up? Were you going to? There's some content in there I probably shouldn't. <laughs> yes. So, um, and this, this is where a um, young lady up top is going to think I'm extremely creepy. So, when I talk to parents, and your parents saw this part, uh, unfortunately, this young lady, that was her son that was in the photo. Uh, she sent you know, multiple tweets from different places, and she was up and down the I-81 corridor, uh, which runs in, in Virginia. Based off the information she shared, I knew where she worked and where she lived. We confirmed that with the points on the Twitter map where she was tweeting from. So unfortunately, she had put enough information out there. She had tweeted from her daycare location as well. There was enough information shared where I, I or anyone that read that could have walked into the daycare facility and said, oh, Brittany, you know, Brittany's going to be late. She's stuck at the optical place where she works. I went to college with her. We went to Shepherd University. Here are the five friends that she's you know, with. And her aunt, you know, her aunt Betty, uh, you know, was six, so she can't be here today. And if I was really good at, at playing that part, which I'm not, I could have walked out of there with her kid. In the, uh, in the video, there, they got that information, all the credit card information, isn't there no way to avoid, like, getting all that information and everyone knowing what you've been buying? Yeah, there, it, you're never completely safe. So that's why the awareness part is important. So for folks who choose to share their credit card information and their purchases, I see people, again, people post their license, people post pictures of dumb stuff. I've seen plenty of Instagram photos where they take a picture of their license and their credit card is in the windowed envelope in the wallet next to the license. <laughs> okay. So you think this is all about minimizing your risk. Are we 100% safe online? No. The only safe computer is a computer not connected to the internet. You're never safe, but what this, the primary thing is minimizing your risk. So if you're taking a photo, be conscious of what's in the photo. Is your mailbox, is your house number in the background? Is your license plate number visible? Uh, is your street sign visible? Are you out in front of the Severn School? So there's the picture of the window in the back. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different things. It's all about minimizing the risk. I think that it's 11 o'clock. Okay. Okay. You guys have to go. Sorry. Right. You guys have been a great time.